Hello everyone, welcome to Average Joe Watch Reviews, where we do more than just reviews. I want to welcome everybody to our live stream today with a very special guest. But let's be honest, every one of my guests is special. So I just want to just wait a little bit of time to give people an opportunity to get into the chat and uh, we could definitely get started. We got Ken Spear checking in from Pittsburgh. Always appreciate your support, my friend. Thank you so much for joining us. And we have Mr. Cripperino. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the live stream today. Today, we're going to be talking about a micro brand that is all about Americana. But before we do so, um, I actually wanted to uh, have special guest Bob Ross give one of his inspirational quotes. He's actually been a uh, hit, hit on the channel so far um, in a couple of my videos. I've actually had people ask me where I've gotten this guy. So, uh, I actually have the, him in a link, usually below my videos, to uh, you know to, to purchase Bob Ross. So let's see what he has to say today. It's a good place for Bob Squirrel to live. Yeah, he doesn't usually make too much sense, but um, you got to love Bob Ross, and uh, here he is. So we've got two people in the chat today, but today we are looking, or at least today we're going to be discussing Sangamon watches. We have... Tyler from Sangman Watches, and he's actually in the waiting room awaiting the approval to come in. <laughs> so with no further ado, I would like to introduce the CEO, the founder, Tyler from Sangman Watches. Welcome, my friend. How you doing there, Tyler? Hey, how's it going? What's going on, man? It's, it's doing well. We're here in Illinois. Uh, weather's getting a lot better, so... We're awesome excited about the future. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, I, I want to welcome you to the channel. Um, definitely, uh, the one thing that has really struck me about your brand is the fact that you guys are all about American history. And a lot of your watch lineup that I've noticed is inspired by American history. So can you just tell the viewers a little bit about uh, the beginnings of Sangman Watch and also a little bit about yourself and what made you start the company. Okay. Yeah. The beginning, um, our company was started between me and my co-founder, Brian, who's okay. also very active on social media. And we were in the consulting business for the past 10 years. And we, we were in the office one day with our other colleagues and we just got, got talking about watches. He was buying a bunch every time we traveled, buying them at the airports or, at the retail shops and um, we were talking about the watches and one guy mentioned that there used to be a watch company in our town so we, we are located in springfield illinois which was home of the illinois watch company right so they they were one of the the top two or three watch manufacturers from the late 1800s to the early 1900s so we, we were looking to their history and we we just had the desire to do our own watches and kind of tell our own history, um, selecting stories from American history. And that's how we got started. So we, we started our brand about two years ago now. And um, our first collection is called Lincoln's River. Mm -hmm. And that, that was really about our hometown, which is the land of Lincoln, um, talking about local history and how Abraham Lincoln got his start in the small um, log cabin village. Right. And, so that that was what launched us into the micro brand watch industry, and we, we've been growing ever since. Well, that's awesome. And and the Illinois Watch Company, um, if I'm not mistaken, was taken over by Hamilton. Yes, yes, they sold out to Hamilton right right before the depression. So the timing was perfect for them, um, and they they created I think over six million movements during their right. history. So. Be between them, Elgin, and uh, Walton, they're one of the largest three in the USA. Gotcha. So how long have you guys been in business for? Um, the watches we've done for two years. But like I said, we did we do management consulting. Um, we've consulted on everything from real estate to blockchain business over those 10 years. Awesome. And you want to tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. What do you do in your free time when you're not uh, in the watch biz? Yeah. So uh, 
personally, I'm married. I have two little kids, a one year old and a three year old. So awesome. I'm very active, just following them around everywhere, uh, <laughs> picking up their mess, having lots of fun. Um, per- also, I am a sixth generation farmer. So in oh. central Illinois, um, home of agriculture. So I go back home on the weekends and during the spring and fall and help my family farm. Oh, that's really cool. So you're you're a family man like uh, like average Joe here. So uh, I have a <laughs> just just turned one Madison Quinn and um, but you yeah, have that thing too, and you have a watch company on top of that and a farm to tend to. So um, yeah, you're definitely a busy man. So uh, I definitely appreciate you spending a little bit of time with us today. Yeah, yeah, I see your little girl all over the internet. She's very cute. <laughs> Thank you very much, my friend. So let's get into your collection. So now that I actually have the ability to share my screen, uh, we will do that today. And we're going to take a look at your website. And uh, you can just kind of walk us through uh, some of the collection here. So um, here's your website here, sangamonwatch.com. And let's go down to your first collection, which was this particular one. This is the one that you actually sent over to the channel to review, the the Mother Road Brown. And I must say, the leather strap on this is amazing. Uh, the distressing of it and also the rally style. Um, and the bronzing was done really well. Um, can, you, can you go a little bit into this collection and what inspired you guys to start it? Yeah, we, we are located on Route 66. So... We're one of those Route 66 towns. Um, we have a lot of restaurants and attractions that tourists come through our city and visit. So we've always been a, a fan of Route 66, of the Americana, just the overall American spirit um, from Route 66. So that when, when we started the company, we made a long list of collections that we would want to do. And right. um, we keep going back to that list and adding more. And kind of seeing what we want to do next and uh the mother road was is actually the third collection overall so um we did the lincoln's river we did the omaha beach which we'll see later and then we got to something that we really wanted to do was the mother road as well so um being car guys being route 66 fans uh, we wanted to make a watch that really embodied that classic american racing um, so our co-founder, Brian, he was the one that did the, a lot of the initial design on this. And he was just at the car shop getting his car worked on. And he saw those classic uh, racing torque to us, uh, racing rims. Right. So that's initially what started that design process. Gotcha. So yeah, you can great. see that it, it's very hard to see in pictures, but the, right. the depth, whenever you get it and you look at it and you, you can actually see the depth um, because it's definitely multi-layered dial um, yes. with that racing wheel. Yeah, I could definitely attest to that, that the pictures don't do it justice. I'm trying to bring up at least one of these. So I, I think you could, see, you could see it best on this one here. This is your, uh, your gold version. But um, you have Spirit on the bottom of the thrust wheel. And here's a nice close-up of it. And you mm-hmm. can actually see that it has like a bead blasted look on the under dial, but the rim itself does, it does look like it's a wheel on the dial because it is, and you can see the lugs here and um, it's a really cool watch. Um, my only complaint about it, and I think you saw that in the video, was that it was just too large for my for my seven inch wrist, but there's a lot of guys out there that really like bigger watches. So. Do you guys have any plans on making a smaller version of the Mother Road? No, we do not. <laughs> actually, well, is, yeah. Actually, the Mother Road started out like almost 50 meters for the dial. So right. it started out much larger. Oh, and, wow. Uh, initially, we were going towards the Harley Davidson crowd because we, we work a lot with Harley Davidson fans. Right. And um, some of those clubs and they, they helped us design a little bit of it. And then we kind of switched and made it more mainstream uh, Route 66 to kind of allow everyone to appreciate it. Right. Um, so so for those that are watching, it's a 44 millimeter case diameter. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys do use a brushed bronze color 316L stainless steel. 
Um, now the the bronzing on this particular one uh, was really cool. Um, do you want to go in, in, into a little bit about how you got like what that process is about? Yeah, that's just a, a very simple uh, color plating process where they put that PVC uh, coating on top of the stainless steel. So it, instead of using like a brass, which is very heavy, they're using right. that that hard solid stainless steel that's much lighter. So you, you don't have all that weight on your wrist. Right. And I wear that watch a lot, the brown one. Um, so I, I don't have any scratches on that coating. It's applied really? very well. Cool, cool. So I actually uh, was, uh, I had the ability to gift it to a good friend of mine who is really into cars, his father actually. So it was uh, somewhere in time, you know, Adrian, uh, so he actually did a review on the watch as well, and he has a huge history with his father building a, a race car here in America. So this watch really means a lot to him, and he's really loving this watch. Um, but, I, you know, I must say that the, my, my biggest and only complaint was the size because the rest of the watch, I mean, it's got an NH35 movement. The build quality is there. Um, the, your strap is one of the best straps I've seen on any watch that I've, I've actually had in my possession. So, you know, just kudos on the watch in general. Um, so that's the mother road watch. So let's move yeah. into, yeah, one, one second. I just want to, I just wanted to say that was really, really nice of you to, to send that watch over to Adrian. Um, we really appreciate the video he did for us as well. And, it seems like it's at a perfect place with him. So he's he's really enjoying the watch. He sent me some messages back and forth. Right. And, uh, you can definitely tell it, it hit his passion right there. Absolutely. And, and you know, he's a top-notch guy, and, and, and you guys are top-notch as well. So I knew that you wouldn't take offense to me gifting the watch. Uh, and as I said, you know, if, if it was just a little bit smaller, it, it, it would have definitely stayed in my collection. But, you know, you know me. I got to be honest. And – um <laughs> You know, that's, that's, that's a good problem to have when the only thing I could say about your watch is just it's a little bit too large for me, you know, but to each their own. So um, Adrian is loving the watch and he's got a bigger wrist size and it's perfect for him. So um, I'm really glad that he had the opportunity to uh, to review it and he's enjoying it. So, you know, that's what the watch watch fam is all about. You know, we, we share our passion and we give each other watches when uh you know, it may not be a best suit for us, but but I'd like to actually get into some of your other watches here that may be a better fit for for guys like myself, and that is your Lincoln's River Collection. Um, this one in particular is really sticking out to me. Very classic look. Yeah, that's that's probably my favorite watch. It's actually the one I'm wearing right now. Um, so I can show you that when we do the wrist check as well. Excellent. 42 millimeters in case diameter, which is definitely my size. <laughs> um, NH35 movement. What, what is it about the NH35 movement that attracts not only guys like you, but also other micro brands? What is it? What, what's, what's the appeal? It's, it's the overall quality. I mean, you're getting a very robust movement that's been tested for years. Um, it's affordable so that you get value using that movement. Um, the thickness is good. It has the hacking ability. It's not loud like you, you hear some complaints with the Myota uh, 8000 series. So right. overall, it's just, it's just a high quality, um, very good for microbrand watches that have to pick and choose where they want to put their money at. So we, we felt that it's one of the top uh, movements and we've used it twice so far. Uh, but later on, we're going to definitely expand and use other uh, automatic movements as we expand our collections. Okay. So uh, there was a couple questions in the uh, chat in regards to this, the Sangamon name. Um, yeah. Now I know that's, that's the river in Illinois, correct? Correct. But let, I'll, I'll have you just go into what, where did the Sangamon name come from? Yeah, we, we get a lot of questions on the name. Um, they say, oh, Sangamon, uh, it doesn't sound very American. But a right. actually, it's a Native American word. 
and it, I think it translates like to the land of milk and honey. So it's like a very fertile uh, location. We have some of the top farmland in the world. And our county name is Sangamon County. So Springfield, Illinois is located in Sangamon County on gotcha. top of, on top of the Sangamon River. Okay. So Excellent. if if you live local, everyone knows the name and there's every type of business that uses Sangamon from Sangamon Electric to any other type of business that you see. So it, initially we just love Sangamon. We couldn't use the Springfield Watch Company or the Illinois Watch Company since they're both trademarked. Um, so we, we were drawn right to the Sangamon name. Excellent, excellent. Um, just reading some of the comments here. Uh, I saw the brown one on the internet, but it didn't appeal to me. But seeing the black and white versions opened my eyes. And so this is actually the your going back to your Mother Road collection. So let's just go back to for mm -hmm. one second. I'm sorry to go back. I'm a little bit behind on the comments. So uh, so we'll go back to here. And so they were looking at the different ones, and it looked like this one was definitely more. So that's why that's why you guys have different versions because different right. strokes are different folks. Um, now these are limited. Um, have any of these sold out yet? Yeah, for the Mother Road, uh, we're we're very low on the white. We only have less than probably ten right now. Oof. And we have sold out in the tie dye. So if you, um, we only ordered I think twenty tie dye versions. Gotcha. So if you go back and click to the far right, the arrow. Oh, there we go. You'll see the tie dye, and that was oh, the wow. first one to sell out, and that wow. that came with either a black and a green dot uh band so that that one the pictures really doesn't match what it looks like in person it looks a little different in person but everyone that's bought that watch has loved it so wow that, that was the first one to sell out right away and we, we didn't know when when you do the the process of selecting which colors and designing the different colors we just wanted one that kind of really stood out and popped and we got that inspiration from cadillac ranch uh down in texas where they have the tie-dye spray colored cars where the the tourists can stop and do their own spray painting on the cars so that uh, was that was the inspiration behind the tie-dye i gotcha so so each one has a little different um inspiration like the the black and orange is directly for the harley davidson lovers so we were working uh, with a couple Harley Davidson clubs, and they they just love the black leather, the orange. So that that one is perfect for that type of individual. Where the the white one with the red and the blue, when we picked those accent colors, we designed it right around that classic Route sixty six neon sign. Oh, I gotcha. I mean, Route 66 has a lot of heritage. So, I mean, that that one, I guess, had to have been part of your your collection. I mean, it just runs throughout the entire United States. And it's just, there's so many different sites to be had on Route 66. And uh, so that's that's just, uh, that, that was just a must in your collection, right? Yeah, that, it's crazy how many tourists travel Route 66. Um, actually, our co-founder, Brian, last fall traveled from Springfield all the way to California doing the Route 66. So he took the watches on the road, stopping at all those off the wall places, all those right. diners. Um, so a lot of our pictures are from that trip. I gotcha. We have a uh, Junior Johnson in the chat. He, uh, in the late 60s, he hitched hike uh, <laughs> out west on Route 66 and had a blast. So that's pretty cool. And this is my fiance. Um, if average Joe, and family decide to start a watch company, what would be some of the challenges to expect? <laughs> Great question. Thank you for the, uh, for the question. Well, first of all, the money is the number one challenge. Um, you see all the time the Kickstarters, um, companies launching watches but never funding them. So we took a very different approach to this where we always have funded the watches personally. Right. So we funded ourselves. We do like a we do a couple prototypes where we feel that we feel that it's ready for the the market. And then after the prototype, it t typically takes about two to three months to get the end product. 
So during that time is when we do the pre-selling. So that just allows us to kind of recuperate a little bit. We give like a 30% discount to mm -hmm. the customers during that, that time because they're buying the watch before it's available. Right. And that's allowed us to just kind of recoup some of that cash flow. So number one would definitely be the financial um, process, whether you're going to do a Kickstarter that has its own difficulties um, or whether you're funding it yourself. Number two, I would say also a large challenge is finding uh, partnerships, finding the mm -hmm. factories to do the manufacturing. There are right. so many factories um, across Asia that we contacted before we did this. So we, we actually took trips. Um, personally, our co-founder and I, we have experience in import-export business. Um, he also speaks Chinese, so ah. he, he can deal directly with our manufacturers on a, a level that our competitors probably can't. And right. we, we work very closely. We did a tour um, where we visited about 12 different watch manufacturers before we selected a couple that we want to work with. So if you don't put in the time, you don't do the, your due diligence ahead of time before you launch any product, you're going to end up getting a lot more challenges down the road. Gotcha. How do you guys deal with the quality control? Is that is that because your partner um, is able to communicate? Like how much communication is needed to get that quality up to your standard? Yeah, the, the quality, you really can see it when you do the tours of the manufacturing. Right. Build. Yeah, you can you might see pictures where people will send you like a factory will send you the pictures. But when you go on site, you can't take a, a nice looking picture. You're going to see what they're doing and how their quality is. So if, if you see a picture where it's like white coats and they're all suit up, but then you go to the factory and it's totally different, that's a huge red sign. So a lot of those quality control issues are just by selecting factories that know what they're doing and have the, the process down to a science. Um, later on, when we do the, the final end product, we will have an outside uh, quality control professional to go on site and look at the watches. Okay. So that's, that's another issue um, to help cut down on those problems. And then also, before we ship it out, we're always filling out uh, the warranty card. Mm -hmm. So that allows us the ability to look at the watch before we send it out. Oh, cool. We have another uh, question in the comments from Peter C. Money suppliers. Any suppliers in the U.S. for watch companies? Yeah, we've looked very hard. <laughs> I bet. I mean, uh, you guys are all about American or, or U.S. So I would figure that would have been your first your first stop. Yeah, we we've checked. There's not any companies that are doing automatic American made watches watch movements yet. Um, we we are talking with one that's in the process of doing um, automatic movements and they do quartz movement, like mm -hmm. the assembly in the US. So we might work with them in the future, but right now it's just, it just left the US after the depression and really didn't come back, especially right. on that manufacturing level. You might get a, a brand or a watch company that does it, but they only do it for themselves. So. Gotcha. Doing a movement like the the NH35 or something like that, it's not in the USA right now. So it, the the labor costs are probably too high, and just the experience of doing it the past a hundred years um, is not there in the US right now. Gotcha. Great questions, guys. Uh, keep them coming. Uh, let's go back to the website and take a look at some more of your collection here. Um, so here we are. Okay. So I wanted to comment on your case backs because this in particular, this one here, the uh, Lincoln's river. Now, was this the first one you guys, uh, produced? Yeah, th this was the one with the local history on the Sangamon river when Abraham Lincoln was taking a flat boat down the river in 1831 and he got stuck on a mill dam. So you can see in the engraving, the mill dam in the background. Um, and he got stuck on the river right around where New Salem is today. So 
It's right outside of Springfield, Illinois. So we, we felt that story really tied our name Sangamon, our logo, which has the river in it, and it ties us to Abraham Lincoln, which is world renowned. So we felt that was the story that we really wanted to go with for the first collection. That's definitely one of the most detailed case backs I've seen uh, on a watch. Now, is this laser etched? Yeah, so this is a laser etch because we have so many details from the willow tree um, yeah. and the water to the, the supplies. He was taking barrels full of pork and um, grain down from central Illinois all the way to New Orleans. That's so awesome. um, all the details are there. We, we worked very closely with an artist to get that um, created. And then... Our other two case backs are deeply engraved. So those are much more simple in terms of the details, but the engraving is much deeper. So um, we, we've done a little bit of each and we like whenever we can mix it up a little bit. So we, we love the case backs. Anytime you use like the NH35 or a simpler movement, that's not the most appealing compared to like an, um, a Swiss movement we definitely feel like the case back adds more value than just having the, the plane rotor in sight. Right. Do you guys have any plans on doing any Swiss movements uh, for any future watches? Uh, not right now. We, we do have plans to use like the old pocket watch. So we, we have restored a few of those pocket watch movements, a lot of them from the Illinois watch company um, and doing a very unique niche, um, more high end watch with those movements. But maybe in the next few years, we can do one um, with a Swiss movement or a higher quality modern movement. Very nice. I mean, I like the case size of this, 42 millimeters, uh, 12 millimeters thick. And uh, you're using the sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating. Um, how many layers of uh, AR do you guys use? Yeah, so this is another issue that's very detailed. Um, you see some watch companies will go out and say like seven layers or 10 layers. Uh, but when we were actually doing the, the uh, manufacturing tours, we, we discussed this with each, with each one. And really, once you do so many layers, the, the value really diminishes. So we, mm -hmm. we felt a good number is three to five. So on this one, we have three layers of that anti-reflective coating on the inside. So that's very common for the micro brand watches to have that anti-reflective coating on the inside of that crystal. You know, I noticed that your, uh, your packaging is top notch as well. Uh, for this particular uh, watch, you're actually getting a cherry wood with high gloss piano finish. Um, very impressive for a watch in this price point. You don't typically get this type of presentation in a watch that is under even a thousand dollars, let alone under, in this case, we're looking at, what are we looking at currently with this one? This one's under five hundred dollars, even. So I mean, wow, that's that's impressive. Yeah, that's we wanted to create an overall package and experience when you're opening that up and showing it off. So it comes with the story card there, which uh, we we went and discussed the the history around that case back in the watch itself, um, what the watch, how it ties to the story itself. And then the, the nice premium cherry uh, wood box, we wanted to just provide more value to our customers. Right. So we don't, we don't, we're not here to get rich or to make a huge profit margin. We just want to pr provide good, solid value to our customers that they would have a good experience with our watches. Absolutely. Um, you know, we're getting some uh, requests here for a wristwatch check. So let's just take a break and see what's on the wrist. You are the guest. So what is on your wrist, my friend? Yeah, I mentioned this earlier. It's the Lincoln River. So nice. this is the silver. So it's the all stainless steel. It's very, very heavy for a watch. And then it has the engraving as well which you can kind That's of what i want to see yeah it's hard to see with the claps there it but, is yeah but i get a better yeah. idea um very very detailed is that a butterfly clasp that's on 
Yeah, it is. We we actually had a different class on one of the prototypes, but it was too difficult for even yeah. us to open up, and we wanted to make it very simple. So cool. Very very. There's nice. it's very seamless, very easy to just pop open. Yeah, and to put on the wrist. It definitely has has a presence on the wrist. Um, very nice. Yep. So today I'm rocking a brand from the UK, which is the Accurist. Now, this is actually a present from my friend, and once again, Adrian from Somewhere in Time. <laughs> so as you can see, it's a very giving community. And I actually put it on a sailcloth strap. And it's not from a company that you guys would think. This is actually from my iwantastrap.com. And this is actually going to be a review where I'm actually going to be doing a head-to-head -head between this strap and the Artem strap. So stay tuned for that. So that is on the wrist today so thank you for sharing that and let's see here would would like to, here we go watch so we have a good friend of mine watch the time would really like to feature one of these watches on my channel looks amazing so what i would recommend is getting in touch with tyler and uh having a discussion and see where it goes from there yeah that's great we we work with everyone um from very small reviewers, we just sent out a round of watches to people just starting out um, to larger reviewers as well. So we're, we're open to collaborating and doing any anything that one of the reviewers or other bloggers or website reviewers want to do. So we're very open. Uh, just reach out to us. I appreciate that about you guys because, I mean, I don't obviously I don't have a huge channel. And you were more than welcome, welcoming to uh, send a watch over for, for a review. And you were more than generous to allow me to keep the watch. And I mean, look, these aren't, these aren't cheap watches that you're sending out. So to give a average Joe like myself an opportunity to uh, represent your brand and to, to actually have the ability to, to give an honest review without any kind of stipulations is a testament to your company and the fact that you guys believe in your brand. So I've had nothing but positive experiences with you guys, uh, just even chatting back and forth. You're very uh, personable and extremely friendly. And I feel confident to uh, to promote your watches and which is why you're on the show today because I just have a special liking towards, towards your brand. So I wanna thank you again for, for being on the show. Yeah, thank you. We we know how much time it takes and the reviewers put in to creating that content. So whether it's YouTube review or like Instagram or blogging, we, we really know that it takes a lot of time and you guys are doing more work than the average um, person that sees your content. So we, right. we feel there's great value in working with those types of um, really distributing our information, our brand out to the to the world because it's much much more fun with us to work with reviewers than it is to put like a facebook ad or a magazine ad out there so absolutely we, we've had the kind of the process the model where we want to do more of the charity um, giving away the watches we support a lot of local charities or even across the usa people have contacted us where we would rather donate a watch to the, to them versus spending thousands of dollars on a magazine or right. some type of airport or mall advertisement. So that that's really been our motto from the start is to kind of deal directly with the consumer and provide more value, more charitable action than just a local advertisement. Well, that's awesome. And, you know, believe it or not, there are some brands out there that, you know, they they're very particular when they send a watch, they want to have certain things said and they almost, some, some of them want to almost like give you a script. So <laughs> these are definitely brands that I'm not interested in. Um, I actually had a watch brand that wasn't a micro brand actually, um, that actually sent me a watch. I did the unboxing and as you know, I was very honest. So when they, when they saw the unboxing, they then started to try to put stipulations on me. So I just simply packed the, uh, the watch back up and I sent it back to him saying, no thanks, because on my channel, I only do honest watch reviews for the viewer. 
So when you guys sent that watch out for review and said, hey, man, we want we want honesty because it only makes us better. Right there, it just showed me that you guys were the real deal. And um, that, that goes a long way. We uh, we have someone in the chat that wants to know what is the best way to get in touch with you? Uh, do you want to show up um, or actually uh, share your Instagram with with uh, anyone that wants to get in touch with you guys? Yeah, in Instagram, we're very active on there. So you can just send us a direct message there. Um, I think our our Instagram handle is just at Sangman Watches. So uh, feel free to contact us right there. Or you can go on our website and we do have like a contact section with an email address. So you can reach out to there as well. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Ken Spear, for that. Appreciate that. Uh, Peter C has a question for you uh, in regards to how do you get about getting your product into the marketplace? Great question. Yeah, this is a very, very important question is the distributing the end product to the customers. Right. So I think a lot of micro brands, even us, we have a problem with filling that distribution problem. So we're not working with a lot of large retailers or jewelry shops. So our, our main um, core service is to put it on our website and to do the e-commerce. So we have the website, um, we have all the social media platforms. We always try to funnel them into our website. Mm -hmm. So that way, even when they purchase online, we're fine giving them like a 10% or 15% discount um, awesome. because it allows us to get it, get the sell directly um, and pay no commissions. We, right. we're, we're starting to grow our, our brand and starting to work with some very select um, retailers, especially in Asia, because they love the American heritage behind the watch. So that's like the next level of getting your, your product throughout the marketplace. Oh, interesting. Didn't know that. Very, very cool. Well, let's get back into another watch of your collection. Uh, so we talked about the Mother Road collection. We talked about Lincoln's, what was it? Lincoln's River, right? Lincoln's River. And uh, there we go. So let's see what's we next. Get, so we're getting into the ladies' collection. Is that correct? Okay. Um, let's keep going down. There's one more sure. that we've, we've launched. So we'll, we'll talk about the first three and then we'll talk wow. about the future after that. So awesome. the second collection we launched was the Omaha beach. So this was kind of the complete different from the Lincoln's river. Um, this one is quartz. So it's a much more affordable watch. Um, the packaging is more card uh, cardboard, a premium cardboard versus like that cherry wood. We, mm -hmm. we wanted to make a product that would appeal to different, um, customers. So if someone only wants to spend a couple hundred dollars for a watch, we wanted to provide good value. Um, it has that sapphire crystal, which many uh, watches under $200 do not have. So we, we just wanted to create a good value um, in that $200 price level. So th this one tells the story of Omaha Beach, uh, World War II history, and really talks about like the soldier rushing uh, the cliffs there during D-Day. So the, the case back is deeply engraved. Um, you can see the soldier rushing through the sands on D-Day. So th there's the coin. That's just an extra um, product that they get with the, the watch. Gotcha. And that is that we fully custom designed it. Um, here oh, cool. we see the case back. So there, there's a lot going on here. We have the date of D-Day. Um, like I said, when you do that deep engraving, you kind of have to keep it clean, keep it very simple. Right. Um, but we, we also wanted to provide some details. So we have those 24 stars going around it. And that really talks about, that's kind of an honor to the 2,400 people that lost their lives on Omaha Beach during D-Day. So oh, wow. that, that's the rough estimate of deaths on that date. Uh, so we use the 24 stars to represent the 2400. Um, it's very easy to remember 24 to 2400, and it ties it even more to the history. 
So that that's part of the story card that you get alongside to further connect with the watch. Excellent. That's that's really deep. I like that. Um, paying tribute to our soldiers. So um, so this one is definitely the more affordable version. Uh, currently, we're looking at a 199 price point uh, slash from 229. Our case size is 43 millimeters. Again, we're using 316L stainless steel, 12 millimeters in case thickness. And you're using a Seiko VD78 quartz. So nice to see that you're using Seiko. Seiko is definitely one of the most reliable movements around. So nice that you're uh, using and sticking with the Seiko, uh, including your automatic movements as well. So it's nice to see that you're, you're sticking with that. So really cool. And what is your most popular uh, color on this particular watch? Yeah, so if you actually look, these watches, they're in order from the most sold watch. So the far left is the most popular. Gotcha. So it goes in order of how many cells we have. So that's very simple for, for us. Uh, so you cool. see the green is the most common. Uh, I like that one a lot. The green is very sharp. It has that army green uh, with the star, the army star right in the middle of it. Uh, and that movement we picked after we designed it because we really okay. wanted to, that second hand and that star right there to represent uh, uh, the army. So that was the, the first uh, high quality movement of quartz that we found for that second hand. That was hard okay. to, to match up. Yeah, I was, that was actually a question of mine is like, how do you guys come up with the movement? So I guess you go uh, the dial design first and then you go, OK, well, what movement will fit the complications that I'm trying to that I'm looking for with this particular watch? Is that is that kind of uh, the, the mindset? Yeah, you, you can. Uh, it's kind of just back and forth. Depends on whether you had that design in your mind or whether you have the movement. So you kind of right. can build around each either one. But on this watch, we really wanted to make the dial uh, something that was very unique. So putting that army star in the middle uh, around the second hand, we thought would really make that more unique than just a plain color dial like our first watch. So oh, cool. we, we had to go find the movement for this one to fit our design. Very nice. Welcome, Travis, Trap Vision 3D, uh, new subscriber to the channel. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. We're talking about Sangamon Watches. We have Tyler, the CEO of Sangamon Watches, joining us today, talking about their collection. And we're talking now about the Omaha Beach Collection, which is a really sharp, sharp collection here. So let's, where should we go from here? Should we go back up to that? Yeah. Yeah, this this is our ladies collection. So this is our fourth collection that's coming out in May of 2021. So we, we just started the pre-sales. We just put these online. Um, so this is a ladies watch. We know there's a lot of watches and most of the the buyer for the watches are men. But we wanted to provide something different, something unique. So we were able to select a ladies um, watch and tie that to kind of our overall brand. So this is called the Clara Harlow Barton collection. It's all designed around Clara Barton and all of her uh, amazing honors throughout her life. Uh, this is a citizen movement. So it's a quartz movement. It comes in five different colors, which you you can see. And it, it's again, a very high quality watch for the price. The pre-sale price is 129 and that will jump back up to when it's final in the market, it'll be close to the Omaha beach price. So our customers are getting tremendous value right now, ordering early and helping us, like we said, to get the cash flow uh, to finalize that watch. Awesome. Awesome. And you know what? There's one thing that I could say is like a lot of the micro brands, they focus mostly on men's watches. It's very rare that I see a, 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 a lady's watch in the collection. So kudos to you for doing that um, because we do have a lot of ladies that enjoy watches. And of course, 
us enthusiasts as men, and I'm sure you already know this, but like we have ladies that like watches. So if you can capture our attention, this will be a great gift for our fiancés, wives, girlfriends, whatever, mothers, daughters. So this is uh, this is really cool. Uh, the size on this particular watch is 36 millimeter dial. Um, so I bought watches for my wife uh, from those large, highly internet uh, brands. So right. I was very familiar with the sizes and the colors, but none of those offer the sapphire crystal or the uh, reflective coating, the stainless right. steel. So we wanted to put kind of like those standard specs of the micro brand that we've been doing into the female version. So we really wanted to make a high quality product and make it for the ladies. Uh, and this is a, the first ladies. We also have another design that we're eventually gonna come out in the future that would be more um, kind of aviation themed for the ladies. So oh, cool. we want to do, we want to do stuff, uh, something different each time and make it very customizable versus just doing the standard watch, um, with different colors. I mean, again, you're offering a, a great movement with the citizen 2035. Uh, so limited time 129, but this will go back up to 185. Uh, when what, I guess after the pre-sale, yeah, so the, the pre-sales, uh, will phase it up as the time goes uh, and then we'll we'll probably have it somewhere around 170 uh, 180 at the end where we'll do occasional sales like we do with our other watches but more more often than not it'll be around that 180 uh, price cool. level excellent yeah nice to see that um you know the ladies get left out a lot of times i think and you know my fiance she's a avid watch collector and you know, do you guys have any divers in the uh, in the mix for, for ladies, or at least you know maybe a unix unisex size? Yeah, we we definitely have a lot of concepts that we want to do. It's just the timing, uh, the right. process, the cash flow. Um, so after this Barton collection, the next huge collection that we're going to do will be a men's diver. So we haven't done a diver watch yet. We have a lot of customers asking for the that type of watch. So that will be our next huge launch. Uh, and we're going to do the prototypes here in the next few months and then eventually, hopefully, get it out before Christmas. So that's the goal right there. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, so we have about 10 minutes left. Um, I actually wanted to get into maybe some of your personal watches in your collection. And also, do any of those watches in your collection inspire the watch designs that you guys implement in your in your personal collection for this for the uh, for the Sangman line? Yeah, we we both me and our co-founder were avid watch collectors. Um, we like you said, like I said earlier, we go when we traveled. We used to buy watches a lot, so we saw that most of the watches are very similar. Um, outside of the movement. So we want to do something very different where we do more customizable on the on the dial part and just put a more common movement in. So that was kind of our initial thought process. Uh, and also we want to mention that we also have stuff other than watches that we're going to come out with in the future. Oh, right. I meant so to share I, that. Let's go back. Yeah, let's go and show some of our other products. Yes. Uh, just last... A month or two ago, we launched Salisbury Collection, which is another local history inspired collection, which is just a fixed blade hunting knife. So uh, you can pull that up on the website. This this was something that we just had the passion for. Um, we want to wow. do something besides watches and kind of the our customer likes the these type of products. So. We want to use our customer base from the watches and create other type of products that they would want to purchase for themselves or their friends. These are really, they look like really high quality knives. I mean, these are the real deal right here. Um, I don't know much about knives, but taking a look at these, I mean, look at the, uh, the leather uh, that actually protects knives. I mean, all Sangamon logos on them, but, really yeah. high quality leather can you share that screen please 
Oh, oh we can't see that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, so so for this knife, we wanted to stay consistent with our brand. We are all about the history. There we go. Um, so we wanted to tie our history into the handle part of the knife. So if you see the, the walnut handle, um, you can yes. see that wood is all local. It's located within 500 feet of the Sanglon River. We oh, have cool. a close friend that's a craftsman, and he processed all of the walnut wood uh, for those handles. So we used a very high quality walnut. Um, the, the bone you can see is from Mongolia. The knife itself is Damascus and it has over 10 different layers of the steel. So it, it ended up much better than we initially thought. And the, the knife is very sharp. So I've definitely cut myself a couple times doing the pictures with it. It's oh, wow. super sharp. Um, the sheath is all handmade using a, a good quality leather. So uh, right now those are on sale for I think 139. So it's not asking a lot. We don't, we're not going to have a huge margin with the knives, but we did a hundred of them and we just want to provide something else besides watches to our customers. Wow. They are really nice. What, what is the design element on the back side of the knife? I mean, pardon me, I'm not a knife kind of source, so I'm sure there's a name to it, but um, it, it almost looks like waves or some type of texture. And what, what, what is that? Okay, so you're talking about up top. It's just a different texture. Yeah. Uh, a different process that they use. And then let me, I have one here. Oh, cool. So I, I can show you there's different grooves here on the, the top okay. to show off. So you can see the thickness. It's very thick and it's yes. very heavy. So it right. fits in your hand very nicely. Um, and again, really the walnut is what makes this knife stand out. So it's it's beautiful. And we've, we've got a lot of good reviews on this knife. We have a question here in the chat. Why do knives and watches go so well together? That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> why Why don't they or why do they? Well, no, why, <laughs> why do they? Why do they pair so nicely? There seems to be a lot of watch enthusiasts that love knives as well. What is the, what is the connection? Because I, I don't get it because I'm not a knife guy, but I can appreciate the look of your knife, but... I don't, I mean, I would probably just open up my packages with it. So I, I can't justify paying that kind of money for a, for a knife to do that, which is why I just have my old fashioned, you know, razor blade. But what is that connection? I think it's just in our DNA. <laughs> it's just, it's just nice watches. Also, um, alcohol, the bourbon, those three things you see across Instagram. Right. Those are always together in pictures. So it's, it's just what individuals like, and um, it's definitely what a large part of our consumer, our customer base likes. So we, we were happy to do something besides watches um, and to pr provide different products. So other than knives and watches, we also have our leather making goods. So yes. if, if you can share the screen again, we can Absolutely. briefly go go through those as well. Yeah, because so I noticed there was a cowhide one that looked really appealing to me. Um, this guy here, the Mon the Montana cowhide yeah. travel watch roll. Yeah, so that one just sold about a week ago uh, to a local guy that came in and really loved it. And uh, I, I handmade all these, so I- oh, well, you, So you did. You yeah, actually so hand -stitched. I, I hand stitched these. Um, wow. Wow pounding it through uh, and then stitching it through. So all these are 100% handmade by me. And I, I always try to source the leather lo uh, within the US. So this one comes from Montana. The other ones we've used are like SB Foot uh, Tannery, which does all the Red Wing leather supplies. Um, we use this cow high has the Horween leather on the inside. So it has multiple layers of the leather. That's impressive. Uh, do you also hand stitch the, the leather straps as well? For the, the watches? 
Yes. Or no, I do not. That's that's it's just takes too much time. Um, yeah. This this leather goods is more of a hobby for me. Wow. Uh, it, like this this watch reel right here took probably seven to eight hours if you did all your time added up. Wow. And I have that whole cowhide in my garage, so eventually I'm gonna make more. Um, probably a lot of like two knives or two uh, watch holders instead of the three, just because when you put that extra layer of leather on the inside, it makes it thicker and it, it's very hard to stitch that. Um, it takes a lot of time. So I see that these are sold out, which I mean, look, it takes you seven, eight hours to produce one. I could see why um, you're only charging $99, which seven hours, hours of your time, this is definitely not your money maker, right? No, these are just, we do them like um, the SB foot one in the middle there. Well, it's the right. same leather with those two. Uh, so there I did like 12 different watch rolls with one little hide. So when okay. you, when I do a bunch together, it's it's much more efficient. The cowhide, I just did one, so it took more time. When I, when I end up doing the rest of the cowhide, then I'll definitely get more efficient with that. But yeah, th these are just hobbies. Um, they're just something that we want to add to our customer. We do a lot of like raffles or even charity. We'll, we'll do some of these. We'll, we'll give away. So it's just um, another product that we can add to our brand and to um, kind of tie that Americana, uh, the American leather with our brand as well. It's very neat. Awesome. That's really, really cool. So what is the future of Sanguine watches? Like what, what can we uh, look forward to uh, in 2021 from Sanguine Watch Company? Yeah, we, we, we have the ladies coming out right now. Uh, like I said, we want to do the men's diver in the future. Nice. Um, so we're, we're planning that around Christmas time delivery as long as everything goes well. Um, if not, we'll just post uh move it back to the, the spring of 2022. Also right now we're working on a, a more high quality, um, a small collection called American legacy collection. So those are like I mentioned, the restored pocket watch movements. Nice. And we're trying to do as much as that as we can in the U S but it's, it's very difficult. Um, we've restored right now, um, a handful of movements, and we're going to use a very high quality strap. We're probably going to either use our cherry uh, wood from the Lincoln's River or make a personal uh, box for the watch. But we just want to provide more custom niche uh, products to our customers. So we, we nice. keep trying to push ourselves, make something unique, um, and also tie it back to the history because overall we want our brand to be consistent. We want to be um, our brand to be inspired by the history. So right. right now we've just focused on American history. Maybe in the future we can open that up more, but we definitely like to tell the stories and to tie any type of that design process to the history is what we like to do. Well, I, that's, that's what I really love about your brand is the fact that you are just incorporating Americana good old American history into your watches. And that, that appeals to a lot of us, um, but you know, uh, there's just a lot of people that have a lot of passion for America and especially in these trying times, the political uh, atmosphere that we're in, I think having a brand like yours is, ex is extremely important um, because you're just so about America. Um, so I, a huge respect to you guys for, uh, for starting this brand and incorporating the history behind America. And, um, as you know, I'm a big diver fan, so I really okay. hope to work with you guys in the future and, um, showcase that watch. If you're interested, I would love to, uh, show off your diver because that's all I really wear anymore. Um, I don't really mm -hmm. have anywhere to dress up, so. Uh, your dress watches aren't appealing to me right now, but uh, the diver will definitely be on my list. So would love to work with you in the future to uh, showcase that when that comes out. Um, so that's, I'm definitely looking forward to that. You said it right around Christmas time. Yeah, we, we hope to do the first couple prototypes during the summer. And then once we feel comfortable, then we will um, launch that hopefully before Christmas, if we can make that timeline work. So. Awesome. 
Uh, Ken Spear from Pittsburgh, a nine to five kids farm watch company, knives, making leather goods by hand. When does he sleep? <laughs> That's a good question. Yes, when do, yes. do you sleep? It's, it's hard to sleep with two kids. Um, we're always up in the middle of the night with them. <laughs> but I don't know how yeah, you find a time to do all this, man. Yeah, it, it's tough during the winter, especially. I do most of like the, the leather goods out in my garage. So it's it's just tough to find any time. Um, but for them like the the pocket watch ones, I've already made all of the leather pouches that are gonna come with those. So each one gets a, a leather pouch. I have one here. So I've already made all of them for that. And it's just a single watch holder. Um, very simple, very good. Because w when you travel a lot, you need something to hold your watches. Right. Something like that is great. You can wear one, put one in the pouch, and put it in your suitcase and not have to worry about it. Yeah, because, I mean, a lot of times, let's be honest, we just toss the uh, watch box aside and we put it away. So it's nice to have something that – and the other thing is, I mean, you don't want to you don't want to carry a beautiful cherry wood watch box in your – you want something that, like what you have yeah. there, a watch roll that just takes up very little space but protects the watch. So very, very nice. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of us that, like like Trap Vision, that doesn't get into, that hasn't gotten into watch rolls, but definitely finds this one interesting. And he also appreciates your, uh, your heritage when it comes to the brand. So he's definitely sold on that. So very, very nice. Uh, we're actually at the hour point. Um, is there anything you'd like to, uh, to end off with? Yeah, just just thank you for having me on. Um, I'm a big fan of watching all of your reviews, um, even you, the man. ones where you talk about the negatives of the micro brand. Uh, <laughs> I was waiting and, for that one. And then you come out with the positives, so you made right, up with right. it there. Um, but I, I love all your videos. You're just down to earth. Um, and it's, it's nice to just watch videos and to see other people's personal uh, thoughts about different watches and you definitely get a lot of watches coming through your channel, so yeah. it's it's been it's been a good time uh, meeting you, getting our watches over to you, doing the review of the Mother Road, and we'll definitely send you another watch here coming up as soon as we can. Awesome, man! I, I look forward to that, man. I mean, look, you know I'm honest, and the Mother Road just didn't work out for me, but. <laughs> I still love your brand. I love I love what you guys stand for. I love the the history, the heritage, the the Americana. And as I said before in the beginning, like if the only thing I could say negative about the watch is the size, I think you guys are doing something really right because <laughs> there's no such thing as the perfect watch. Okay. Yes. So, you know, but as I said, I am really looking forward to your diver collection. I will definitely be sporting that for sure. And Adrian, I don't think I'll be giving that one away to you, buddy. Uh, <laughs> I, I really love my divers. so. Uh, <laughs> but I do want to thank you so much. Where can people find you on Instagram? Yeah, so Instagram, just either search for Sangman Watches or type in at Sangman Watches. And that, that's our handle for our, our, our handle there. So, um, Or you can go to our website, SangmanWatches.com, and you can see all our products there. Awesome. Well, Tyler, uh, it was a really good chat. I really appreciate you uh, sharing your watches off to us. And uh, hopefully we can get some more business over your way because your customer service is indeed top notch. And I'm all about that. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I look forward to that diver very, very soon. So uh, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Have a, have a great day. You too, buddy. Appreciate it. Well, guys, that was Tyler, the CEO and co-founder of Sangman Watches. I want to thank everybody for joining us today on the chat. I hope that you guys learned something new because I surely did. I mean, these are unscripted. Uh, so this is definitely something that I learned a lot about the company. Never knew that Tyler made his own straps. I thought that was really, really cool. And uh, the fact that he just has his hands in so many different things. I, I like Ken Spear asked, like, how do you find the time? I'm, I'm really impressed. So uh, really, really appreciate you guys joining me today. And always remember that there's always time to be kind to one another. Please take care. And I'll see you guys next time on Average Joe Watch Reviews. God bless my friends. <laughs>